Mandarin's Redwood High School before the end of his freshman year, but he sure did his homework before pulling off his crimes. Greg Garrett worked the case for the Marin County Sheriff's Office. I've never had a, uh, a, a crime like this that was so sophisticated by such a young person. Among the hundreds of pieces of evidence I inspected, Max Wade's computer history showed his preparation for Grand Theft Auto. Just 16 years old at the time, he Googled Lamborghinis, how to jam the auto theft prevention system LoJack, and lock picking. It's all about reputation. Wade even posted a video on his YouTube channel of him practicing less than two weeks before the car heist. Here we go. He researched British motor cars in San Francisco and Mission Impossible style repelling. That's exactly what he did at the dealer early morning, March 3rd, 2011. These crime scene photos show how he tied off a rope on the rooftop garage. Surveillance video obtained by the I-team catches the rope falling to the ground. Wade scales down the side of the building and into a window. Inside, he takes his time, spending almost 15 minutes walking through the dealership. He had a throat mic, or what appeared to be a throat mic, uh, for a you know for two-way radio, and he a couple times appears to talk on it. No one besides Wade has ever been arrested in the case. He walks to the exit door and cuts the lock with these bolt cutters. He drives the yellow Lamborghini from the second floor down the ramp and gets out to roll up the door. Back in the car, Wade appears to fumble with the controls, mistakenly turns on the wipers, and pulls out into the pre-dawn darkness. Golden Gate Bridge cameras caught the Lamborghini, and so did Tiburon's license plate readers. It came into town at 4.40 that morning with Chef Guy Fieri's Guy Toro plates, and it left Tiburon at 6.13 with stolen plates. It's amazing. I mean, you know, he's, he's obviously very intelligent and, uh, you know, some of, this, some of his stuff was, was definitely the work of a, you know, very sophisticated, uh, you know, criminal. Other things seemed like they were teenage fantasy. In the year that followed, Wade's text messages show he sold fake IDs to high school students, sometimes at $500 each, and he dabbled in dealing marijuana. He couldn't help but tell friends about the heist he pulled off, even sending selfies inside the car. He texted, man, I love my life, boosting a Lambo and picking up cute girls when you're 17. San Francisco police got a tip Wade had the car, interviewed him, but couldn't make a case. I think it was sort of the gossip around the high school that he had taken credit for the crime and had the car. I don't think San Francisco was able to contact anyone that had actually seen the car. Wade sometimes drove the car, and its owner, Guy Fieri, often got reports of sightings. We would get calls all the time, and I mean all the time. I had friends call me and say, listen, I just saw your car on the freeway. And I'm like, believe it or not, there's more than one yellow convertible Lamborghini, you know, probably in Northern California. And people would call, and we'd get reports. My attorney would hear about it. Well, to come find out, you know, that he was driving it. Brave kid. Wade finally got caught because of his fascination with a Tara Linda high school student, 17-year-old Eva Dedier. He texted a friend for advice. Should I straight up start sexting with her or be just be flirty with her? Wade texted Dedier for days about getting her a fake ID, and he finally asked, so who are you spending Valentine's with? Dedier answered, my friend Landon. Landon Wallstrom, Wade's schoolmate from Redwood High. Wade couldn't take it. He planned his next crime for April 2012, Friday the 13th. He's on a motorcycle, all in black, watching as Eva and Landon walk out of this Mill Valley home and climb into his pickup truck. They pulled up next to him, and, uh, and the, the cyclist pulled out a, a pistol and started shooting at them. Wade fired five shots, fumbled, and dropped the gun, allowing the couple to speed off. They stopped a few blocks away at Joe's Taco Lounge. Wallstrom was cut by flying glass, shaken but not seriously hurt. It was Wade's bad luck that the two detectives assigned to the case were motorcycle enthusiasts. They recognized the helmet Wade wore. He was caught on camera filling up at a nearby gas station shortly before the shooting. Built is a store brand that you can only buy from Cycle Gear, either over the internet or at, at their retail stores. And we knew that uh, the closest re retail store was in San Francisco. The store found Wade's receipt and a video of him buying the helmet and that black outfit the night before the shooting. Garrett couldn't find a current address for Max Wade, but a week later came the break. Wade contacted Eva Dedier again about getting her a fake ID and offered to pick her up in the Lamborghini. Garrett and a team of 10 officers were waiting at the Richmond storage facility where Wade had a locker. And when he spotted the officers, Wade ran. One of the narcotics guys gets close enough to kick him and is able to kick him in the upper chest and knock him to the ground. And he had a gun on his waistband? He had a, 
a loaded Glock 45 with uh, uh, approximately 50 rounds of ammunition in separate magazines. Garrett says Wade struggled to reach his gun, but it was stuck under the T-shirt he wore beneath his peacoat. The detectives opened Wade's storage locker to this site. Fieri's Lamborghini squeezed inside with just inches to spare. The motorcycle used in the drive-by, the helmet, and guns and plans for other crimes. Wade rented the storage unit under the name Carmine Colombo. He also had a fake ID in that name.